Today, I'd like to talk about stability because I always talk about stability. What we're going to do today, as far as the exercise, is some non-specific shoulder motion. Um, the shoulder is, is a circumductive joint. It moves all over the place. It doesn't just move forward and back, up and down, out and in, side to side. It can do all kinds of circular, arc-like, round type motions. So we're going to put some of those in there. And we're going to do it at angles that we don't normally see when you do typical weightlifting exercises in the gym. And the, the reason for this, of course, would be to, to access some of the muscle and get some stimulation into some of the angles that you don't always get. And if you want to find out just how interesting it is to test and see, change your angle on your bench press or your incline press by just a little bit. If you have an adjustable incline press, drop it down one or up one, and you'll find out that you got stronger right where you always train. And you didn't get as strong a little bit above and a little bit below. So what we want to do is we want to train that shoulder to be stable when we bench press or stable when we're doing athletics. Uh, it, it doesn't really behoove a lot of athletes that uh, don't have variety in their motion to do a ton of this. They should do a little. But athletes that, that are like wrestlers, where they're always getting their shoulders and bodies into different angles where they have to apply force. Uh, football, where you, you might get your, your, your arm caught out here. Well, what if you didn't train at this angle or that angle or any angle? So a little bit of this, is it goes a long way. Let's put it that way. What we're going to do is we're going to use dumbbells. And I'll just show you with, without the dumbbells what she's going to do. She's going to act like Frankenstein and just put her hands out straight in front of her. Pretend she has dumbbells in her hands. What we're going to do is we're going to make a mirror image of side to side. And each side is going to trace a letter of the alphabet in capital. So to make an A, we'd come down and then up to the point and top and down and then cross it. That's an A. Could you see those letters? Now make a B. So up the middle, trace it out, trace it out, see the B. Now a C. Now a D. And you work your way through the alphabet. Stop. Why don't you grab a couple dumbbells and we'll, and we'll do it. So you work your way through the alphabet in this non-specific motion. The reason that I give you the alphabet to trace, and there's some straight lines in there, of course, is because it gives your mind something to do. If I just said move your shoulders around for three minutes, that's not really, it's hard to, it's hard to know if you're doing the right thing or not. This is easy. You trace, everybody knows the alphabet, and everybody can do this. So let's take, how, how heavy are those? Five. Okay, all right. There's nothing else. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. Just do, just do a couple. So make an A. Now a B. C. D. Spine in the middle, out to the sides. Good. Continue. All right, see the E. Now what's going to happen? Rest, please. What's going to happen as you get around G, H, I, is you don't want to keep your arms up anymore. You're starting to make letters that look down like they're down here. And then, so what you want to do is try to keep them straight out to the front and, and avoid letting them dip and dip and dip. Rest for a second. So that's one non-specific shoulder motion with the alphabet. The other one I want to introduce to you is out to the sides. Set the dumbbells down for a second. And now put your arms out to the side in a T. And now what she's going to do is she's going to make the letters facing outward. So the A would come up and down and across the B. And so now the letters are facing out to the sides. You're making one over here and one over here. Mirror image of each other. And you're going to trace the alphabet with your shoulders in this position. So try the dumbbells. Try the fives. That's a good, that's a good amount of weight for this. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
And what I should be able to do as a coach is look away and then look back, and I should be able to identify what letter she's making. If you're just kind of doing these little tiny, little, little, little letters, I can't tell what they are. Nice big letters. She's making large motions. She's moving her shoulder. Look at the shoulder, how it moves. It's doing all kinds of different things. It's moving this way and that, but she has a structure to follow. By tracing the alphabet, go ahead and rest. By tracing the alphabet, it gives you a structure to follow so you know where you are and you have a place to mark your progress. So if she did all the way to Z with those, we'd go to eights. Maybe she only got to, you know, J. Well, then she knows next time she can shoot for further letters of the alphabet, K, L, M, all the way to Z. So by doing the alphabet, there's nothing special about it. You could do numbers, you could, you don't have to do the alphabet, but it's a lot of different motions. It gives your mind something to think about and focus on, um, and it gives you some, some way to gauge your progress through the motions. So uh, another way we could do this is overhead, but that doesn't, it's, it's, it's okay, but because the weight, if you put your hands overhead, and if we were to make the, the letters facing up, we would get some back and forth and side to side motion, but the weight itself is pretty much coming down into the body. So it's not as effective, but it's not bad. So this is non-specific motion. It's non-specific because we're doing all kinds of random things. You could do the letters backwards, Z back to A. You could start, you could make all, <laughs> you could make all circles. And another exercise that I do with this is a spiraling motion. Put your hands in front like a, like a zombie or a Frankenstein. And, and what, what I do sometimes is a spiral. So you start with little circles and each one gets bigger and bigger and larger and larger. And you, you spiral it out and then you spiral it back in. And that's also non-specific shoulder motion. Either of those things are good. I like the, go ahead and rest. I like the, um, the, the structure of following the alphabet. It, uh, it feels better to me. Uh, you can do whatever you want though, because it's non-specific. So you can make up your own. You could invent something and let me know about it. And if it works for you, tell me. And, and uh, you know, maybe I'll start doing that. I'll do a video on that. But I hope you see the value of this by, by uh, moving around in ways that you're not used to. You access muscles, and you might even build some size in those muscles, which will help you in the bench press to, to firm up and, and have more bulk that supports that shoulder. And you're moving around, so if there is some sort of shift or motion or bobble in your, in your drive line, there shouldn't be because your technique should be solid. But if there is, and if there was, you can, you can sort of use some of this strength and connection to these little tiny motions to help alleviate that. So I hope you find this interesting and give it a try. Uh, you'll be surprised how hard it is to get from A to Z just with fives. Um, I think the heaviest I ever got was like maybe, maybe 25s. I did have an athlete though that got to 35 pounds for three sets of A to Z. And that's pretty amazing. So that's the, that's the best I know. Um, but they worked up step by step by step. They, didn't, they weren't thinking about trying to get strong. It just happened. So this isn't a strength exercise as much as, as it is a movement exercise to access some muscles that you haven't. So I hope you like that and thank you for listening.